Hi there. This is a video showing how to start a game of North versus South. This is the beginning setup. We have each deck here. They've been shuffled and cut by the opponent. We have the supply um, tracks here. The CSA start with zero. The North start with one. Each side has two um, at start map cards set up and the South have two cards in hand and the North have three cards in hand. Now um, each side will bring themselves up to eight starting uh, factors which is say three cards, one supply and then four more for the North. They draw it from the top of the deck and you have to check it. Any cards that are late war such as this one We'll now go to the bottom of the deck. As that's the first one, it goes face up so we know when late war starts and we redraw a card. Okay, I'll just show you actually the, view, the north starting cards. So actually you have the devil's own luck. That is, each side has one, the south have miracle from God. That stops one leader from being killed on the leader loss roll. So you, your, your best leaders don't die too unfortunately. And then they have Department of Washington, so that can only be um, to send, uh, only be used for defence of Washington. It doesn't subordinate, so no one else can't be under anyone else's command. That will go in the east. And then they also have David Porter's North Atlantic Blockading Squadron. Um, this is quite an interesting card, because if they don't play it down in the first turn, the south will get a free um, strength uh, supply point because if there's one one squadron down that's partial blockade if there's no blockade they get a supply point two squadrons down it's full blockade and they will have um, uh, other reductions but uh, he could place it in the in the west and that's not likely going to happen it depends if he might draw a card in his starting hand that is west and what want to invade and might need that there but in most situations that's going to go straight down here and bring the partial excuse me partial blockade into effect so he's drawn one enigma card uh, john brown's body um, which enables you to undeplete some units all your units at the end of turn you got pauline cushman spy of the cumberland you can use that to examine the southern hand at any time so I'll put all the Enigma cards up there. Then he's got uh, the 21st Corps, Decent Strength Unit, and Nathaniel Banks. Um, he doesn't have any fighting strength as such and only initiative of one, but it's not initiative of zero. He will not subordinate, so he won't be able to go under Sherman or Grant, but he can um, command three Corps himself. So the, the Northern player just takes that. The southern player will take six cards because they have just two factors there, nothing on supply. So we've got seven cards there and one supply gives us eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's a late war card. So again, we've got the late war marked already. Draw another card. And they end up with, well, they start with the Miracle from God and then also this very useful card, the Tidewater Militia. It's, it can be played in either the East or the West. That You don't have to restrict um, divisions. Like this division is playable in the West only. It can move to the East later, but you can only plonk it down in the West. And as it happens, they've drawn four more divisions. You see the strength is a lot lower than the Confederate cause, obviously. And these can all only arrive in the West. Now, that's very interesting because this first draw is very important because at the beginning of the game, the Confederates have an opportunity to take Washington and or cut supply. Um, take... Not, they have a good chance, they do have a chance later in the game, but it's probably not nearly as good right at the beginning, 
to take um, Union cities and win the game early on. If they don't, then they're, that's if they do that, they essentially win what's called the CSA strategic victory. Otherwise, they're looking for a, a lesser victory, like um, operational or um, or traditional or even diplomatic. Um, and then they, they, fortunately, they have an army com commander, Bragg. He can take all three of those, well, three of those divisions, not all three of them. You can actually put down more divisions than, than the leader can take. You can see Bragg can take three divisions. He also will not, oh, no, that's not, will not support. He's got, he treats a general's battle as a stalemate. So although he's got good initiative, he's not going to win with it. Um, so he, although he can only ha use three divisions in a fight, he could take three with him, but one, if any fight occurs, one will just be immediately turned down as ineffective. So uh, that is the um, CSA starting hand. Then they get the first... Um, they get an immediate... Uh, You can place some cards there, so it's before actual play, and then you replace his cards, and then the USA gets the first turn. So it's, it's in effect, it's really just a free turn for the USA. Oh yeah, and interestingly enough, for the CSA, sorry, I should try and stick with North and the Blue and Grey. I keep calling the North and South as Blue and Grey in this game. Okay, so the Greys get La Belle Rebel, um, which is similar to um, Pauline Cushman on the the blue side, but. Um, she can also give you a bonus of combat in the Shenandoah Valley if you're defending there based on historical circumstances. So, um, So he needs some defence. Now, the, the West isn't opened up yet, but the Union, for all we know, has some cards in hand. Because we can't play any of these to the East, we're a bit stuck. I think what we're going to have to do, it's unfortunate, we're going to have to put down the Tidewater Militia. It's handy to keep them in your hand as a reserve to add in the battle rather than deploy in a specific theatre straight up. I'm going to have to do that, I think, with Bragg, with the Tidewater Militia. I can place some units down the west. Um, uh, I don't, don't want to sh um, shoot my bolt and show everything, but I'll put down two. So they, they will be uh, independent um, in preparation for later leaders and so forth. So that's the um, before the first turn. Then we take the first turn. So um, the blue side gets to draw five cards. Well, um, it's the same drill with um, late war. So that's late war, but this time it's turned down. So as per the normal draw deck, you won't know what it is. Three, four, five. Or we could have drawn, yeah, sorry. Or we could take a, add a supply. So we have five factors in supplies and or cards. So I'm going to add one supply. So we've got two, which enables us to have two attacks. That's going to be great because it, it looks like the um, uh, greys are unable to defend. So we have Enigma card, Special Orders 191. If the CSA attacks on native blue soil, we can play that. We got Cavalry General and two more core cards. So now we go to the deployment. So we take whatever we like uh, out of our hand and deploy. 
and that possibly move across theatre by rail movement. Um, no, the uh, CSA couldn't do that in the pre-game setup. So Porter's definitely going down. So we've got the partial blockade in effect. So the CSA won't get that um, extra supply at the beginning of their turn. Put the Department of Washington down as an independent. Um, and then Banks is going to go down with this east. Um, core with him. I put the West core down. So I'm saving one core and our Enigma cards. And I'm also going to put Benjamin Henry Grierson's cavalry. I'm going to put it down in the West. Now, um, I had to deploy this in the West. I'm going to now use the rail movement to move it over to the East and it can attach to Banks there. So he's now got a nice force, strength 7 versus 2 here, but uh, Bragg has higher initiative, although as we learnt for his specialities he's not going to win a, a battle that depends on comparing the, the leader's initiatives. So now we go to combat, we don't have to do combat, if we don't we can spend a supply and reorganise all our forces at no, with no restrictions, but that's not necessary now, so we're going to um, do, do combat. Essentially what will happen is that we will say, okay, Bragg, we're f um, attacking from, with banks from, let's say, I want, to, I think I, I got a chance at the Shenandoah Valley now because they're, There we go. I could go to Manassas and then straight to the wilderness. Hmm. Okay, I'll do that from Washington to Manassas. And then the uh, Gray decides, has to say, are they going to defend or win out? Bragg's going to defend. So then we pit Banks against Bragg uh, at Manassas Junction. And we have here seven versus we could even have gone for Richmond from Fort Monroe already and uh, no, no, that wouldn't be gained, does it? It would be against the fort. No, I prefer that. It's a, a force of minus one on the D6 is a big change in the combat. I, I, I'd be waiting for a, a decent card to change that. If I'd added the cavalry, the cavalry could have been added with banks, which would have given us nine versus two, and then we could have attached at the Shenandoah Valley, which is a pest hole, which adds five to the grey force. In that case, We would still have had, had a greater force from them, but I've done that now. I'll, I'll let that stick. Um, which is probably a bit foolish. I should have done it differently. I, should, I think I should have attached the cavalry there. But the, I left the cavalry detached because what he's going to do then is he's able to um, reduce... He's able to do a cavalry raid and... Ah, I need three points of cavalry. It would take off any supply that the Confederates might have gained and not used. So that's that's pointless. I can't do that at the moment. I could do that later for attaching him. So I'm going to keep him with Banks. So he's attached to Banks. I'll say I played him down there instead. So we are going in. And we're going to go to the Shenandoah Valley. No, we're not. We're going to go to Manassas first. Because um, we've got two attacks, we'll, do, 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 we'll, we'll go for the wilderness, which is also a pest hole afterwards. So uh, Nathaniel Banks can only go from one city to an adjacent city. If, if Brack, for example, has initiative two, he can skip a city. 
um, but then you can have trouble with your supply lines if you're not able to defend and retreat out. So anyway, we've got banks on nine versus two. That's not great, but we, we're hoping for a stalemate as the grey side. And there's no, we could play something from our hand. Indeed, I'm going to do that. I'm going to play this division from the hand. Well, no, I think it's the attacker will go first, so he gets a chance. He's going to pass, and the defender adds from his hand. That brings him up to, and this is a very strong um, division for the Confederates. That's a three, so now he's five versus nine. That's a difference of four, so he's not going to win on a general's battle. So we're back to good odds, and... We're still, the Union is committed. Uh, what he can do is try and reduce his losses if he draws a card, turns a card over. Okay, then that's so he withdraws one card from the battle. I um, mean, not wanting to commit everyone, he's a bit cautious because he's not fancying his chances too much. And he rolls a four. So, on um, a four, and it's unmodified, that is a soldier's battle. So that's going to be a stalemate since neither side has five more strength than the other to win the soldier's battle. So each side has two units in a stalemate. We will each deplete one of them. Okay, and I'm going to mark the policemen with these rather than flipping cards back and forth. So now the CSA card is worth one strength and the, the um, blue card is worth two strength. I rolled a six, uh, I rolled a five for um, casualties, which are just normal. And if I'd rolled a doubles or seven on those two dice, then I would check my third die for leader, um, a leader loss. But that's not the case now. So that is one supply spent, and we did not gain the city. So we have another supply, so we, we can try again. Now this, um, after that combat, he's flipped back over. So we, he can come in in the second combat we're trying. The same direction, Washington to Manassas. So now it's 4 versus 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we're still in the same situation and Uh, I'll just roll for it. Okay, we get a five, which is a defender defeated, and a three for light casualties, no leader loss. So the defender is defeated. We take Manassas, no market with a, a blue marker. And we check for the losses, so we have three and two units involved there. So as a victor with three units, we take one depletion. Actually, I should swap those colours around. Now I could deplete that same unit again, but then he's going to go to Cardra. And once you're in Cardra, it's essentially like you can draw the card back, but it's the same as in lieu of drawing a card from the deck. Okay. Um, Okay, and oh, two and defeat. Oh, he's got two depletions, so one of these does have to go. Okay, so he's already lost a division to Cardra. And that is how it happens. So now we go to um, real, uh, regroup. 
uh, in which case I could spend a supply and or what more one or more supply and for each one supply underplate three units. I don't have that as blue, so we go over to the Confederates. Go. Okay, so at the beginning, because they have uh, the part, there's a partial blockade. If it was full, they would. If there was no blockade, they would get one supply. With partial blockade, they can underplete one unit for free, and then they get four cards. If we had full blockade, they get then um, two. Um, If there's full blockade, then he's fulfilled one of his victory points. And Okay, so there's no, with a full blockade, the CSA just gets no benefit. Okay, um, so they can draw four cards. Now that's interesting. They got two uh, map cards. Now, each side has the same map cards, but, and it's building up um, the theatres of war. But uh, if the, the, the blue plays... Um, for example, this card, burn, will actually come under um, blue control. So it simulates battles happening outside of the, the actual gameplay. So it's important, and as this, the grey, I have to lay cards down if I can. You can't lay cards down if there's gaps. So these ones join up to Raleigh, and G goes next to it. Join Knoxville to Chattanooga. Okay, so that essentially the West still can't be entered from from um, the, the northern side, but it does open up ports to naval invasion um, along the Atlantic coast. Then we also got Longstreet and Stonewall's division. So Gray didn't get any supplies, so he won't be attacking. He's Going to okay, he's going to put Stonewall and Long Stonewall's division of Long Street down there in the east because that one has to be played in the east. Then he's going to detach Cleburne from Bragg. He's going to move Bragg over to the west and he will pick up. No, he can't. No, I can't send him over with nothing. So. The rule is you can attach or, de or detach. You can't do both in the same turn except for once. And what I want to do is put Cleveland there. So I, what would happen was that I would detach and then attach. But unfortunately, that leaves him with nothing. So he would be sent to Cardra. So. Uh, I don't really want that. How can I play? Oh, I know. I could rail one over, attach him. Then... Detach Cleburne, attach him there for my one free attach, detach. And now we've got a strong um, nine point strength there. And then I can rail these over to the west in preparation if the card opens up. It's also kind of like a threat because the Union might want to put a card down, but if he has nothing to defend, he won't. And then I might get a chance to put my card down, a grey card down, sooner. Um, then I can also attach this to him as well, which I think is the obvious thing to do. 
Okay. And that is the grey gang. So then we go back to blue. And he's going to take... He's got some units he needs to undeplete, really. So he's going to take two supply. And then he can draw three cards. Oh wow, he's got ground out. Um, infernal machines. Yes, that allows me bonus on a fortification, except for Richmond. Um, okay, and last card is late war. So draw again. The east. Okay, this is very weak core, but it is a core. So what I can do is. I'll put that in the west, just for defence against Bragg, in case that opens up unexpectedly. Um, then I'm going to bring out Lee, I mean, sorry, uh, Grant. Unfortunately, Branks cannot serve as a subordinate. So if I put him there, that's going to send Banks to Cardra, but it does make him a lot stronger. Let me just think about this a minute. I'll spend one to undeplete those two. And then we've got straight four, five, six, seven, eight, nine here. I want to get, if I get 10 more than that, I get plus one on the combat die. Or if I get five more than that, I at least win soldiers' battles. So I want at least five more. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I see he's got three cards in hand, and I know one of those is Miracle from God. So I'll count on him having, say, two more points. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. That doesn't give me plus five. Um, and there's the next targets are pest holes, which is plus five. So that's not great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Grant down and transfer a core to him. So detach and attach. And then at the same time, I will detach the cavalry in preparation for attaching him to Grant next go. So we've now got three forces in um, the east for the blues and a naval squadron. I can use a naval squadron to fight. So I can actually bring one leader and two core down to attack Norfolk. I could potentially attack from Fort Monroe with that as well, but then they're going to defend. That's going to be too tough. So I think what I could do is use the Infernal Machines. I can't be used on a, a, a sea invasion. So I can't use that against Charleston, Wilmington and New Bern. I could for Norfolk. And it's, although I don't get a victory point for individual um, cities, as the Union player, each city I take um, shrinks the rail network, which makes it easier to cut. And that cutting the rail network gives me a victory point as well as helping me reduce the uh, grey hand size. So I think I'm going to go for Norfolk, and I'm going to go for him with Grant. And so Longstreet can choose to defend, but it's going to be quite heavy battles. We'll have four... 8, 9, 10, plus 3 with a squadron is 13 against the 9 there. Plus, they don't know what I've got in my hand, and I've got more cards than them. And Longstreet's only got one initiative, so he'll be thinking I'm going to lose on the General's Battle. All things being equal, the die rod is just flat, e even chances. Um, for attacker defender, so it all depends on the 
who's got the possibility of winning the general or the soldier's battle plus any um, cards you have. Hmm. So he, he's thinking that the um, blues might get a soldier's battle, but I, th I, th I don't think he can give up. So when we're we attacking, we're going to attack Norfolk because it's not a fort, but it is a port with that naval squadron. Do I just give it up? I think at this point I do, because after that there's Petersburg, which is a fort, and then Richmond, which is also a fort, but so Petersburg is a good defence. That's not giving the... So they still have to spend a supply, but they take Norfolk. Pretty much uncontested. So... Uh, and that is the end of the blue go. So we go back to grey and they get one free under policeman, don't need it, and then four cards from here. That's Hood, a map card which does not fit on so they don't have to play that now, but it counts. So one, two, three, has division which goes in the west. And I'm going to take the Tidewater Militia from Cardra. So that's the four. Um, what can I do with this? So Hood is good. Um, he has initiative two, but only on attack and zero on defence. And at the moment we're defending, so he's not going to be much used there. Um... What I could use him there is use him to attack up to Harper's Ferry. That's going to be helpful. Okay, we'll do that. So we'll start threatening again because I got all these Western cards. It's not. A Um, if I move by rail, I could put him down here with these western divisions, but then I want him to attack from here. We could potentially take Cumberland Gap, which is neutral, but then I think that makes Kentucky automatic. When it comes out, that will be card C. That makes it automatically neutral. I think. Maybe not. But that we can't go any further. Um... He won't be able to. So if he comes here now, he won't be able to fight this turn. I could fight with Long Street. Why not? But then Grant's going to defend. Oh, I haven't got enough supply anyway. So it's all moved. Okay, so I put him down in the west and then shunt him over by rail. So now I've got two forces there. So that's the greys. So. Back to the blues. One, two, three, four for a supply. And for the fifth, do I want another supply? Do I want to attack twice? With there being two leaders, they will both be defended. But if I keep depleting their units, they're going to have to be spending supplies shore themselves up and then they won't get cards out which is a good tactic I think so yes so to supply okay so we've got here two cores one west one east and Rosencrans who's a, a, a not unfine commander um, As it is, he's not that much better than Bragg at all, so I'm going to put him in the west with the 
core there and then attach that core to him straight away. So we've got a nice strong nine point force there in the west for when that opens. Um, and then this one in the east I'm going to keep in my hand. Um, so I think as a reserve. So then we'll, we'll go to combat and we're going to go, we're going to use the Infernal Machines um, bringing Grant against Petersburg from Norfolk. As that's supplied by C, we can only be two core plus a leader, but that's fine, that's what we've got. So a, a point from Norfolk to Petersburg with Grant going in, and then the, which starts out at 10 points. We have nine here or three defending against, so it suggests Longstreet's going to have to do the defence. Good old Longstreet, he's such a stalwart. Um, so playing reserves, the Union starts with Infernal Machines, it gives them, it nullifies the fort, which will be a minus one on the die roll. Additionally, the opponent must deplete or eliminate one involved division of his choice. And that, I think, surprise. Oh yeah, it is a late war card. Okay, I was going to say because that is that bomb at Cold Harbor, isn't it? If you could see the, the trench. Um. Okay, so I'll draw a card to replace that. As it happens, that is suitable. It's a Western theatre only. Um. Enigma card playable as a reserve. Um, okay, so we're on 9 versus 10 plus, and then I surprise with, and I can't add extra because it's, it's by C. Ah, okay, so this is a very dicey attack, but I said I'd do it, I'm going to go ahead, um, at least for the demonstration of the video, um, because I can't pause this and various problems um, with my pause version. Um, four is a soldier's battle indeed, so it's a stalemate. So both sides, we won't take the city, and both sides will deplete one. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh no, I couldn't get on the phone machines, could I? Okay, so both sides will deplete one. And everything stays as it is. Now I can go, I can go in again. And now I'm on nine versus four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, it's not different at all, really. I will win as blue. I will win on the, the um, general's battle. So I do have a slightly better chance of winning than losing. Let's do it. Five. Yes. So that is defender defeated. Losses are normal. Uh, we got doubles though, so doubles is CSA leader is killed, wounded or sacked. And I rolled four, which means that leader is wounded, CSA choice. Well, I've only got one leader, so that means Longstreet goes to Cardra. He's not playable this turn. And that means these divisions separate out as because you can't combine. And... One depletion for each side. Okay. And they got it. Oh no, because it's Petersburg, it has a minus one, so it's a four, which is a soldier's battle. Rather than defender defeated, so we don't get it because I didn't have the soldiers battle. Um, um, different differential. Okay, so that was unfortunate. Um, not very well planned, but you can see how it, how it would go if you're spending more thought and time on it. So that's the end of the blue turn grey turn. And how long shall I make this video is a good question. It's 40 minutes now. 
Um, you can stop watching now because it's just going to go on like this. But I'm going to just play out to an hour or until um, my fan turns itself off. <laughs>